Hi everyone, welcome to On the Other Hand. I'm Ariane Zercher and today I'm going to be demonstrating the tête de boeuf stitch. Tête de boeuf is a great stitch in the round as well as a linear stitch. It can go around a border of a leaf or it can be done emanating out from a circle. I'm going to demonstrate it in a variety of different threads and thread weights, and I hope you'll join me. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to get an email notification, you'll also need to click on the little bell next to the subscribe button so that they'll send you an email when the next video drops. I love hearing from you. So leave any comments or questions you might have, grab something to stitch with, a needle and thread, and come along and stitch with me. I'm using a number five weight and a number 18 chenille needle. I'll go ahead and thread that up. And I'm going to do my tête de boeuf right along here. Now, if I want to be very exacting, I can take my chalk pencil and just draw a vein down the leaf. So I'm going to begin at the tip of this leaf. And the tête de boeuf is really a fly stitch with a chain stitch added to it. So here's my fly. And I'm going to just do a little chain which means I come down like this. And I'm gonna make that chain small, and you can do the opposite. You can make the fly smallish and the chain quite elongated. It all depends on what your what look you're trying to achieve. For this, because I want it to be a vein on the leaf, I want the chain part to be quite small. I want this fly part to be much larger because this is gonna be the veins of the leaf. I'm doing this while looking into the camera as opposed to the work, which is a little difficult. There's my fly. Here's going to be my chain. And it's a, like a detached chain, right? Because you're ending it right there. You're not continuing. Then I do my little fly here. It'll be the veins of my leaf. I do my little chain. This will be my ending right here. And that's my tête de boeuf, using it as a vein for a leaf. To do a tête de boeuf that is going in, emanating from the circle, you can do your little fly and then have the long part of the tête de boeuf, the chain part coming out, emanating out. Or you can do your fly here with the chain going in. It really depends on the look that you're going to want. I thought that I would do an example of it on a circle because it is a little trickier than doing the vein of a leaf. The vein of a leaf is a bit easier. For this, I am going to use my Spoke Easy tool just so that I can get my center of circle down. I line it up and I just follow these 
circles that are, and then I just make a, I'm using the 10 spoke, really just a, a guide that will help. I find without the guide, my stitches can start going in funny directions. Here's another thing that I can do for this that makes it a little easier. I can take a circle, this is a perfect circle, center this, and then draw around that shape with my chalk pencil. Okay, so that gives me sort of a general guide of where I'm going to put my stitches. So it's going to be my first fly. I'm using uh, a number eight weight and a number 24 chenille. So this will be my fly. And I'm going to do my the chain part of the tête de boeuf along that guideline that I've made for myself. So there's my fly. And now I go ahead and do my chain. things to keep in mind when doing it in the circle in circular is the tension so that you don't pull too much in the back it can start to pull it all together and you don't want it to start doing this so you just have to be aware of that the other thing is when you do your little fly portion. If you're doing it outside the circle, you want to make sure that when you come up for the V, it goes right on the outside of that applique and not so that it lies flat there. And then this part comes up onto the circle like the spokes of a wheel. I do think putting chalk guidelines is quite helpful when it's a circle like this. I think it, it's very hard to make this even without it, at least for me. So there it is in the round. That's now you can see that this I, w I didn't come far enough in. I'm doing this looking through the camera as opposed to actually stitching it 
by looking at the wool itself. So the camera's a little um, tricky for me. I'm not really used to stitching this way. Anyway, that's my excuse. I'm going <laughs> to sticking with that excuse as to why that happened. But there's the tête de boeuf in the rack. I'm going to show the tête de boeuf done in ribbon floss cotton just to show you what it looks like in a different a very different thread and I'm going to do it along this line here. I'm going to start at the top. This is going to be my, my the fly part. I'll make that quite shallow. And this will be the chain part. There's my fly, and now here's going to be my chain. I'm going to keep the chain somewhat smaller. So if you have a pair of needle nose pliers sometimes, can be quite striking in various different threads. So when you see it this way versus, say, here, it's incredible that it's the same stitch. The tête de boeuf in the ribbon floss cotton in a number eight variegated eleganza and in a number five variegated eleganza. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to receive email notifications, you have to hit the bell, which is to the right of the subscribe button. I love hearing from you. So leave me any comments or questions you might have in the comments section. And don't forget to check out the description section where I list all kinds of links to the things that I've covered, as well as give a description of what I'm doing. Here's to stitching together.